Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us again for another Ultimate Creative Chat. Today, I have Dr. Christina Jackson with us um, from Samaritan Counseling and Consulting Services. Thank you so much, Dr. Jackson, for being here with us. Yes, thanks for having me here. Absolutely. Um, we are going to talk today with Dr. Jackson about maintaining our mental health during our holiday gatherings. You know, it is the holiday season. Thanksgiving has come and gone. We have Christmas to look forward to still and New Year's and all of that. So we want to make sure that we're keeping our mental health um, in mind when we are getting together with our families we're busy entrepreneurs we don't you know may not even see our families a whole lot a lot of the time because we are so busy however we are still wanting to take time with them and um, really enjoy the holidays as much as possible um, you know, sometimes, Dr. Jackson, it can be a little iffy when you go to the holiday functions. You don't know, you know, for some families, some families are fighting. Um, some yes. have just little uh, things under the surface that nobody wants to mention, but it's a little tension there. So mm -hmm. we want to talk to you and see what tips you can give all of us um, as far as how to manage that process and still enjoy yourself, enjoy your family, not deprive your children of seeing their families, um, but also keeping yourself um, in a good, healthy space mentally. So right. before I dive into all these questions and everything, um, I'll give you a chance to introduce, introduce yourself. Yes, well, I am Dr. Christina Jackson, and I am working with Samaritan Counseling and Consulting Services. I have uh, been doing therapy for quite a while. Um, I've also been in higher education um, as a college professor. So I definitely enjoy incorporating education um, to my clients as well as other audiences so that people can be better informed around mental health issues. Awesome. Awesome. And did I hear you say that you do teaching and training as well? Yes, 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 I definitely do. We can do a number of topics. There's so many, as we'll talk about today, there's so many facets of mental health that can affect different organizations from government to corporate to educational settings. And oftentimes people may not realize the impact of mental health that it could have on one's employees, mm -hmm. could have an, you know, how it impacts one's leadership style, how it can impact a student in the classroom. So we do offer trainings and consultation with organizations who might need some guidance in regards to um, how mental health might impact the people that they work with. Okay. Very nice. Very nice. Okay. So <clears throat> just keeping in mind and in line with the topic that we're discussing today, how can we make sure that we are um, honoring ourselves and our families <laughs> at our holiday functions and family get togethers, you know, during this holiday season, we, you know, for some of us, we may not have been able to come together for a couple of years because of the pandemic, or maybe it, yes. was, it was spotty here and there. And yeah. we just had a, a day here and a day there, but we want to really come together. How can we do that in a way that is respectful of everyone's boundaries and also, you know, welcoming of all the love that we have kind of missed out on here and there. Yeah. So first I would say that the holidays tend to be a really good time for a lot of people or, you know, some people who get to spend time with families, but from my line of work, sometimes it's also not the best of times for people and sometimes that is because they have lost loved ones who are no longer here for the holidays. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes people have experienced other losses such as divorce or separations. And so the holidays have changed because maybe some of the people you used to celebrate with are not there in the same space. So as much as the holidays can be a good time, it's also not a good time for some people. And so I think that's also important for people to be mindful of which is why we're talking about, you know, boundaries. And I think it's a kind of a hot topic in mental health yeah. because I think it is important for individuals to understand 
let's say if they are sad because a loved one isn't there to be very mindful about how much they can handle on that day. Right. So like, you know, I really want to go spend time with family, but I'm also really sad today. This is a really sad day for me. Um, So I think it's always important to try not to isolate if one can. You know, some people do Friendsgivings nowadays. And so they're at least getting together with friends that are like family. You know, I like to think that family doesn't always have to be biological and that it is the individuals in which that person feels like are the people they feel the most loved by. So some people choose to spend their Thanksgivings or holidays, Christmases, the Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, number of holidays, the Wali with people who are, you know, um, friends. Sometimes families are not okay, you know, when you don't show up at times and that can be hurtful. But, you know, I think it's important to set those boundaries to know how much a person can handle. And for some families, you know, maybe people start getting angry or upset during the holiday time, and they would rather not be in that space during that moment. And so it's important to recognize and say, you know, maybe I can handle an hour, you know, with my family before things get a little escalated, and then I'm going to leave. And so you just have to decide what's important for you. It is a challenge because people do love their families, but it's important to figure out what you can best handle, you know, on that particular day. This Ultimate Creative Chat is sponsored by Bella by Tina Foy. The serum you've always wanted to try. The cleanser you've been dreaming of. The primer everyone's talking about are finally available. Get your glow on with Bella by Tina Foy. Skincare you love with values you believe in. Visit us at Yeah, that that's very good, very good. But I'm wondering, is there a time limit that you should set or an acceptable, you know, period of time that one should stay at their relative's home before they decide it's time to go? Or mm-hmm. should they go by how they feel? Or what, how can they handle that? So it So I have this conversation with some of my clients and sometimes for some clients, they are able to know how they feel. So for some people, they may be like, yeah, I kind of know when I don't feel okay," And um, they can be able to sense like, yeah, I think it's time to go. For other people, they might not be able to sense it or even if they sense it, they still may feel bad. So we may talk about a time limit. Right. And some people know their family pattern. So they they know like, OK, you know, people don't come and bring the food until an hour later. So, you know, the first hour we're OK, but then they start drinking a little bit more the second hour. And that's when things start escalating. So some people know, you know, it's a little different for their family. And so they may have something else planned. So I've, I've had clients who are like, oh, you know, I have to. Um, do this tomorrow. So I'm going to head home or, you know, I have to stop by this house. So I'm going to, going to leave now. And so that's one way people can do it. You really have to uh, do your best. I think it's important to kind of sense when thing, when you feel uncomfortable. And I think every, a lot of us have that ability to know, like something doesn't feel right. And to just know how you, how you feel. Some people might decide not to go, you know, we haven't talked about that, but some people may feel like it's just, I can't go at all. It's too difficult. And so, you know, but if they want to see them, is, is a video call acceptable for them? Or I think it's really just trying to figure out what's going to work best for that person. Yeah, very good. And so there are different types of boundaries or different ways that one could set boundaries if they needed to do that so that no one feels slighted. You know, they they invited you to this dinner and you're just yeah. not going to show up, but you, you're you still engaging with them. And I think, yeah. you know, it sounds like open communication is going to be your best friend in that sense. Yeah. I mean, it, that's that's the idea. I, I recognize that, you know, I can hear some people like, yeah, that sounds really simple, but you don't know my family. Um, and what I will say is you have the the other side of that where people are made to feel really guilty 
Mm-hmm. And that's part of a struggle for some people of why they don't continue to set boundaries or even start setting boundaries is because the amount of guilt that they feel if they don't do what, you know, their family wants that they're going to be talked about, they're going to be shunned, they're going to mm-hmm. feel rejected and unloved as a result. And so that also compels people sometimes to just like, it's not worth it. Mm-hmm. Um, but one of the things that I talk about with people is boundaries work and people follow them when you are consistent with them and they're going to talk because it's unfamiliar behavior of you. If they're not used to you saying no, that you can't handle something, they're going to probably have something to say. The people who don't care, they're like, oh, okay, well, we'll see you next time. Um, It's not easy to set boundaries. So I don't want to make this sound like it is really easy. Often when we're talking about boundaries, it's people who struggle with setting boundaries who have to set the boundaries compared to people who are just, it just comes very easy for them to just say, no, I'm not going to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, So this is a, it's a work in progress for people. This is something that I think is continuous work. Assertiveness comes with boundaries. If you don't work on being assertive, it's hard to set a boundary if you, you know, if you don't have assertive communication. Mm -hmm. So the, the two come together but I think it's important for people to at least start thinking about, you know, there that that you can set boundaries. There are different types of boundaries to set, which is another conversation we could have. But specifically, like emotional boundaries is a particular thing or physical boundaries. So if you don't want a family member to, to hug you because maybe they feel a little creepy or inappropriate, you know, learning to be able to say, you know, please don't hug me in that way or I prefer not to hug you. Um, then you have emotional boundaries where the person is made to feel guilty if they don't come and, you know, being able to communicate with the least, I would say, is there one family member that you can talk to and say, yeah, I I think I'm going to have to leave, you know, it just becomes a lot for me. So. Okay. Yeah. And I was going to ask too, is it a good idea to have, Uh, or to identify and know who your ally is sort of on the inside (laughs) so to speak and be able to convey to them that you know I'm really looking forward to you know I definitely want to see everyone I want to have a nice time I want to enjoy the holiday with everybody because I I love everyone but I'm not going to be able to stay the whole time I may be able to do an hour and head out because I have to go to work the next day or whatever. Mm -hmm. I just can't, can't be there. Somebody you can be real with and lay it out there. And if someone else has something to say at the event, you know, it's nice to have an ally, I would think, who could say, oh yeah, she, she said, you know, tomorrow she's got to work. So she'll only be able to be here for about an hour or whatever yeah. the case is. Buddy systems are helpful, right? <laughs> Accountability partners, allies are definitely helpful. Sometimes they're not in the same space. So maybe it's your friend who texts you and checks in and like, how are you feeling? You mm. feeling like you're good? You can stay, you know, yeah. um, for people who struggle with being assertive and setting boundaries, that is usually helpful in the beginning. Mm. to have somebody to be like, yeah, I don't know. So if that's a cousin you really trust and knows that's going to help you in that journey, um, you know, it's always helpful too. I would say there's at least sometimes one family member who doesn't care and they just like, I'm out. I'm, I'm not, I'm not sticking around. (laughs) I have to go. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And I was like, Hey, we'll piggyback off with them. Like, you know, I'm going to leave too. Right. (laughs) So you see people who do that, like, well, they're leaving. I guess it's a good time for me to leave too. So sometimes that's easier for people to do, right? It's like, I'll just go when somebody else is leaving, but some people still struggle, right? Like, well, why do you have to go? And why do you have to do this? Why do you have to do that? Lots of questions and just, mm-hmm. and I always say, you don't have to answer the questions directly. It can just be like, because I need to go, mm-hmm. right? It doesn't necessarily need to be an explanation um, detailed paragraph statement as to why you cannot stay. <laughs> it's learning to let people be okay with your no. Your no should be okay, or I have to go should be enough. 
And if it's not enough, you're not obligated to explain unless, you know, you feel like you have to, you know, or you want to. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Well, what about before the, the event actually arrives? Let's say, you know, it's a couple of weeks before Christmas and you know that your parents are expecting you to be at their home um, with everyone else to enjoy Christmas, yes. but you know, there may <laughs> be some issues that you really are not, you know, uh, looking forward to <laughs> sitting through. Um, how can you, or is it appropriate rather to say something to the host? Let's say it's it's your mom or it's your dad, whoever you, you tend to go to first that, yeah. um, hey, I'm going to come, but I can't stay for the whole, you know, for the whole thing. Would that be overkill or was that good etiquette to go ahead um, and say something ahead? Well, see, this is what's tricky with boundaries. Boundaries doesn't take, there is, there's, it's not about etiquette. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> it, and this is, this is part of the challenge. So you have cultural dynamics mm -hmm. where, you know, and generational dynamics where, you know, the respect you have for elders and people older than you and that you should say something. And then you have good etiquette of like, what's well, just the proper thing to do to let your host know that you cannot stay and things like that. So you, so you have those things in place. Um, and I think you can do those things. Um, but let's just say, for example, in the heat of the moment, you know, an aunt and uncle are having a disagreement in the dining room and you're like highly uncomfortable, there may not be time to have good etiquette mm -hmm. to say, I can't really. So what happens is um, for some people who've experienced traumatic experiences, they may have an experience of which they are now having a, a physical physiological reaction to hearing arguing. Because mm -hmm. let's say they grew up in a home where they heard arguing all the time mm -hmm. and that may be too much for them. In that moment, some people kind of freeze and they can't there. There are no words. Mm -hmm. They just have to remove themselves. Right. Okay. And so um, their brain may not be thinking about good etiquette. Their brain may not be thinking about telling their mom, like, mom, I have to go because their immediate thought may be I need to survive and like save myself. Mm -hmm in this right. moment. So it get it gets tricky, but as you can imagine, they then come back and then it's like, you know, or after they've left, like, well, you didn't tell anybody you were leaving and why didn't you say anything? And you shouldn't have just left. Well, we all had to deal with the argument. So you could have just dealt with the argument. It would have been fine. They do this every year. And I think it's a struggle for that person of like, yes, but I'm learning that that might be too much for me. And so maybe that's a conversation that they could have later to explain maybe to that trusted family member or the one they feel like they want to have the conversation, the elder, who still may not understand it, you know, because it is a complicated thing to explain to people that I'm, you know, I'm learning that I have a different reaction maybe to some people when people argue or for some people when I smell alcohol, it reminds me of a time that I had when maybe I was in an abusive relationship and that person was drinking. Right. So people don't often understand. They just see in the moment, not understanding that that person is, is uncomfortable and might be actually emotionally harmed as a result of staying, mm -hmm. which is why we talk about setting the boundary so that they can leave and save themselves and not be further harmed from what might be happening in their environment. Awesome. The serum you've always wanted to try. The cleanser you've been dreaming of. The primer everyone's talking about are finally available. Get your glow on with Bella by Tina Four. Skincare you love with values you believe in. Visit us at bellabytinafoy.com. Back to the show. About and it really makes me think and draw back on family relationships and how close we can be to our relatives yeah. you know um yeah. 
how come we don't know that certain things are triggering our relatives? You know, how mm-hmm. come we don't know um, that this person had an issue and, you know, something is is bothering this person? How, why don't I, why can't I tell by looking them in the face? Because we're not yeah. close. And so yeah. I think when we have a tighter knit unit mm-hmm. and tighter knit family, we should be able to tell, you know, mm-hmm. that um, things are something that's not quite right. Mm-hmm. So would you encourage people then to develop, you know, closer relationships? And it, it's yeah. not always easy, but yeah, to yeah. kind of build on that so that it's not... Uh, such a struggle and then people don't have to sit through things that they don't really you know can't really get with so to speak yeah so there's there's two things I would say about that and the first thing is um every so here's my experience is sometimes I have a client in therapy and they're the only family member who's ever been in therapy okay so now you have trying to explain to people concepts and ideas that there's never been a conversation within the family Mm. (laughs) right so um so then you have that part so you now have that struggle of that person who's like I'm trying to be different but the people around me don't have that same information Mm -hmm. the other thing is um a, a lot of what I talk about with clients about is emotional intimacy emotional neglect emotional abandonment and so a lot of people don't realize how much historically um, certain groups of people have lacked emotional intimacy. And basically that is being simplified version is learning to be vulnerable and share how you honestly feel with mm-hmm. people. So if you have not experienced that, And if that is something your family has not experienced for generations, the ideal that you somehow are now going to catch how a person is feeling, Mm. we're talking about people not being able to catch that for generations. Yeah. So it would take someone who is intentional of like, I want to be different. I want to learn how to connect with people on a deeper level. Because I hear this all the time when I work with couples, like it's something missing or I, I wish they would cuddle or talk to me more. And, and what they're asking for is emotional intimacy. But often we don't know how to give it because we didn't get it. Right. right? So if you didn't experience a, a home where people cried about things that made them sad, or even if they did, you know, they didn't talk about it. You just heard it. They expressed it, but they didn't really talk about it with you. They didn't teach you how to express how you felt. You didn't get to say so with some generations Like you don't get to say how you feel. You're a child. Mm -hmm. Right. It doesn't matter. So there's so many nuances or boys don't cry. Suck it up. Mm -hmm. Get over it. We don't we don't do tears. We don't do emotions. I hear this from people like I don't do emotions. I don't do feelings. Right. That's not what I do. And I hear it's not gender based. (laughs) I hear it across. And so um, this is a skill set that people have to develop. Um, is to be emotional intimate because I say you've basically been experienced emotional abandonment and emotional neglect which is something people are like really no but my parents loved me it's like doesn't mean that's a feeling doesn't mean they didn't love you Mm. but they couldn't help they did not know how to um, help you process your emotions because they probably did not know how Mm. so it wasn't an intentional thing it was a lack of skill and ability and now you're trying to navigate romantic relationships and friendships that are very surface level, Mm -hmm. right? Because you don't know how to go deeper. So this takes a lot of work from clients. It's really hard. It's really hard for people to tap into those deeper spaces, especially with negative emotions like sadness and hurt and disappointment. Because most of us are like, I don't want to feel that. I just want to escape, right? I'll just go shop. I'll go drink. I'll go have sex. I'll go eat food. I'll go do all the things to avoid feeling these feelings. Right. Because that is way too too hard for me to do. Mm -hmm. And so you get into these tiffs oftentimes in relationships because the deeper issues aren't being addressed, Mm -hmm. right? It's like you didn't take out the trash. The argument is 
not really about the trash. The argument is about, I don't feel like you hear me or you see me or you don't recognize what I need, right? right. That's all about a person's emotions and how they're feeling. It's not about the trash at all. So this, there's a lot of things happening here. Again, lots of conversations that we could go on and on about oh, yeah. um, to talk through, but just so many things to consider, you know, as people are going through the holidays of just being mindful, checking in, how are you feeling today? Mm-hmm. You know, like, how are you doing around the holidays? We know grandma's gone and it's been a year, you know, families can check in, right, right with one another about how they're doing. And sometimes you're like, well, nobody does. And I always say, well, could it be you? Maybe mm. if they did it, could you be that person who's listening to this and didn't know before? And maybe you're the one who's now going to introduce that to the family or be right. the first one to start saying, I love you to your family members. So they get comfortable mm-hmm. with hearing it. So it's just little steps, practicing your, your boundaries and letting other people see that. And you'll be surprised. Sometimes other family members might say, you know, I need to do the same thing next year. Like Mm -hmm. I saw that you did that. And now that seemed to be helpful to you. Maybe I'll try it next year, or maybe we'll just, you know, do our dinners earlier. So maybe people don't drink so late or (laughs) what else can we come up with, you know, that we can do to be helpful to one another. And, And at least again, finding that one family member, that ally who's ready to talk about it. So that maybe it kind of spreads mm-hmm. throughout the family, you know, of how we can begin to shift, shift the generation and shift the family. Awesome. Yeah. And it sounds like, you know, if we can actually check on each other throughout the year, not wait until Thanksgiving right. and Christmas is coming up and I just want to see if you're coming. No, how I genuinely want to know <laughs> throughout the yes. year how you're doing. Yes. Um, because then I have a sense of where you are in life, period. Right. What's going right. on with you and your household? Is yeah. everything okay? Mm-hmm. And then I'm able to be more sensitive to the things that you may be, uh, that you may show up with. You may show up with a little bit of baggage and a little heaviness when you mm-hmm. come to this function. And mm-hmm. I already know why because we've been talking and I know this is going to be a tough time for you. So I'm already prepared as the hostess or as another party goer, I'm already prepared to be there for you and offer you the support that you need and check Mm -hmm. in and do all those things because I already know. Yes. Yes. It's helpful. Yes. I like that check check check-ins. It can be text. Sometimes we're like, I'm so busy. I don't have time to call. You can send a text. You can send a voice message. You can use all types of things that you can use. People appreciate just knowing that you're thinking about them. Mm -hmm. Right. That's always helpful. And we don't want to have regrets later. Yes. Right. The shoulda, coulda, wouldas. I wish I would have told them this before something happened. And Mm -hmm. so we want to try to live in the moment be present. It's what I talk to clients about. Instead of when we escape our emotions, we're not in the present, trying to be present with how we feel in the moment um, and and share with others as you can. Awesome. Well, you have shared a lot of helpful information today. We're going to have to have you back (laughs) to teach us some more and share some good insight with us. Um, I really appreciate and respect your time. So we're not going to keep this uh, lengthy, but I do want to give you a chance to let everyone know where they can find um, you and where they can find Samaritan on social. um, If you want to share that now. Yeah, so all of our handles are at Samaritan CCS. That's S A M A R I T A N C C S. And the same is for the website that is SamaritanCCS.com. Okay, awesome. And are you all accepting new clients right now? Or are you? We, we are. We're actually adding adding therapists as well who are taking some. Um, okay. And we, again, do consultations and trainings as well. So, we have expertise. I have been in the profession for about 20 years now. So mm-hmm. we've got a number of expertise and we have people on our team that are definitely can do trainings on various topics. So you name it. And we just want to help be a force for everybody. 
Okay, awesome. Well, thank you so very much for being with us, Dr. Jackson. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. And thank you all for watching. Please go ahead and share this with someone that you know and love. Get in touch with us today to find out how you can advertise your products and services.